An atomic bomb is not a new conception, a new discovery of reality. It is a very ordinary thing in some ways, compact with much of the science that makes our laboratories and our industry. But it will change men's lives. No weapon inspires more terror than the atomic bomb. These astonishing scientific marvels produce such unprecedented destruction that only two have ever been deployed in war. The story of these bombs is well known and generally accepted. However, what is still disputed is the decision to drop them. For what purpose were they originally created? Was there a better way to win the war? Did 100,000 lives really need to be lost? And could diplomacy have been an accessible possibility? It was July 16, 1945, approximately 5.30 in the morning when the first nuclear weaponry ever created was successfully tested at the Trinity site at Los Alamos. The implications of this test were of gargantuan proportions. On August 6, 21 days after this trial, the technology was put to use when the Little Boy, a uranium bomb, was dropped by the U.S. airplane, the Enola Gay, on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Almost instantly, 66,000 Japanese citizens, most of whom were innocent civilians, were ruthlessly murdered. Another 69,000 were injured, many of whom would join the dead in the immediate aftermath or in the weeks and months to follow. This blatant crime against humanity was repeated the next day when the plutonium bomb, the Fat Man, was dropped on the Japanese city of Nagasaki. Although the bomb missed its target, it still destroyed over half the city and claimed 39,000 lives. The world would never be the same. In your book, Worse Than War, you say that Harry Truman was a mass murderer. Could you elaborate on that? Harry Truman dropped nuclear weapons on two Japanese cities with the principal intent of slaughtering civilians. It was not a military operation primarily, it was primarily an operation to kill people. In the late 1930s, German physicists discovered nuclear fission, or the process of splitting an atom. Concerned for America's safety, Albert Einstein sent a letter to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt informing him of this advancement, and most importantly, its possible use as a destructive weapon. Fearing that Nazi Germany would create such a weapon, the United States began the Manhattan Project. The original goal of this project was to construct an atomic bomb as a means of counter-defense against the military behemoth that was the German armed forces. Germany was threatening to conquer all of Europe, and nuclear weapons in their hands would be disastrous, allowing them to spread their grip beyond Europe and increase their terror within it. The physicist Robert Oppenheimer was chosen to lead the project. It was to be conducted in complete secrecy, so much that even Harry Truman, the President of the United States at the time the bombs were dropped, was not informed about the project until he was sworn into office. All in all, the Manhattan Project took six years, 130,000 workers, and the equivalent of $29 billion today. Nevertheless, the power that the bombs brought with them was well worth the cost required. In being the first to create these advanced devices of destruction, America had become militaristically superior to all of the countries and, more importantly, protected them should another power develop this technology and threaten an attack. Although the Germans decided not to pursue the possibilities of nuclear power, if they had and America had not, the Nazis could have caused untold destruction to the rest of the world. Franklin Delano Roosevelt had prepared a speech to honor Thomas Jefferson just a few months before the first nuclear bomb was successfully tested. Although he tragically died the day before he had a chance to give it, the speech was posthumously published. In this tribute, he wrote that, Today we have learned in the agony of war that great power involves great responsibility. The bombs most certainly brought America great power. With all the resulting power, the responsibility involved was immense. Unfortunately, this is too much responsibility for even America to handle. After developing the weapon, it was quite clear that it was not necessary to use. And so it should have been a weapon that has always been held in abeyance, always ready to be used if necessary, always there to prevent others from using it, but should have never been used either in war or for the killing of people. It should have been used only for demonstration purposes or for test purposes. 
The creation of the atomic bomb was a necessary defense against a possible German nuclear attack should they develop such technology. However, the use of the atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki was in no way a necessary or acceptable means of ending the war with Japan. In its test, the atomic bomb exceeded the amount of destructive power that many physicists had estimated before. The bomb was like no other military technology ever developed. It was hundreds of times more powerful than conventional bombs of the day. During the German Blitz of England, German bombers dropped over 18,800 tons of explosive over a period of nine months, killing just upwards of 40,000 English civilians. The little boy uranium bomb dropped in Hiroshima had as much destructive power as all the bombs dropped during the Blitz combined and claimed 20,000 more lives. Lieutenant General Leslie R. Groves, head of the Atomic Energy Program, was correct in stating that there has never been an improvement in weapons comparable in degree and in sudden impact to the atomic bomb. After the droppings of the bombs, Truman attempted to justify their use, claiming a quarter of a million of the flower of our young manhood was worth a couple of Japanese cities. In saying this, Truman implied that the only two options in ending the war with Japan were a land invasion, which he claimed would cost a quarter of a million American troops, although some of his generals estimated something around 40,000 at the most, and the dropping of the atomic bomb. Many people feel that the bomb was necessary in order to prevent a land invasion of Japan. Uh, what are your views on that opinion? This is simply, a, after the fact, justification for the dropping of nuclear weapons, which unfortunately most Americans have bought, and so therefore most people have endorsed the dropping of nuclear weapons and the killing of tens of thousands of people. What Truman and his advisors failed to see, or simply ignored, was the fact that peace negotiations with Japan could have saved any further bloodshed and would only require slight adjustments on American policy for Japanese surrender. The Japanese state was on the brink of destruction. A high-ranking Japanese official, Hisatsune Sakomizu, felt that the Japanese had no hope of winning the war. According to Sakomizu, the people will have to get along on an absolute minimum of rice and salt required for sustenance, considering the severity of the air raids, difficulties in transportation, and the appearance of starvation conditions in the isolated sections of the nation. Because of these conditions, Japan would not require much compensation in order to surrender peacefully. In fact, they were already seeking peace agreements through negotiations with Russia, as the U.S. knew through a message they intercepted sent from Japanese Foreign Minister Shigenori Togo and the Japanese ambassador in Russia. According to the Under Secretary of State Joseph Gru, the greatest obstacle to unconditional surrender by the Japanese is their belief that this would entail the destruction or permanent removal of the emperor and the institutions of the throne. Gru had been the U.S. ambassador to Japan for 10 years and was considered to be the most knowledgeable U.S. official on the topic of Japan. The Japanese regarded their emperor not only as an authority figure, but also as a god. As Samuel J. Walker put it, hanging of the emperor to them would be comparable to the crucifixion of Christ to us. In fact, even many of the Japanese officials who were in strong support of Japanese surrender said that they would not surrender unless they were assured that the emperor would be allowed to remain in his throne. If negotiations truly were so close to being accomplished, then that begs the question, why did the United States drop the atomic bombs on Japan? Different people speculate about different things. Some suggest that it was a really targeted more at the Soviet Union as a demonstration to the Soviets about the American might in order to further contain the Soviets. Um, others simply think that Truman was, Truman was fed up and, and angry and in a rage at what Japan had done to the United States and did what he actually said he had done right after the dropping of the bomb, which was to repay Japan many times over for what they had done to us, an act of revenge. Regardless of whether the bomb was dropped in order to scare the Soviets or out of pure retribution for the things done by Japan to the Americans, the bomb was a defensive measure that was unjustifiably used as an offensive weapon. For what purpose were the bombs created? Defensive measures against Germany or some other world power. Was there a better way to end the war than to drop the bomb or invade Japan? Yes, diplomacy. And was the loss of over 100,000 lives necessary? In no possible way. We have made a thing, a most terrible weapon, that has altered abruptly and profoundly the nature of the world.